Welcome to Moo Moo Math and Science. In this video, I'd like to talk about the major organs of the human body. I will cover the heart, the spleen, the lungs, the pancreas. In addition, I'll cover the liver, the large intestines, the small intestines, and the kidneys. Let's get started. Welcome to Moo Moo Math and Science. In this video, I'd like to talk about your heart. Your heart has a very important job. It pumps blood throughout your body. The blood carries oxygen, glucose, and other nutrients to each cell and removes waste like carbon dioxide. Your heart is composed of four chambers. The top chambers are called the atriums and the bottom chambers are called ventricles. In between each chamber are valves. The valves control the flow of heart. They allow the blood to flow in one direction, but stop the flow of blood in the opposite direction. Your heart is made up of cardiac muscle and pumps 24 hours a day, every day. Your heart is about the size of your fist. Now let's take a look at the flow of blood through your heart. Blood from the lower parts of the body enters the heart through the inferior vena cava and from the head and upper parts of the body through the superior vena cava. These two large veins empty into the right atrium. The blood then passes through the tricuspid valve and into the muscular right ventricle. The right ventricle contracts and sends the blood through the pulmonary valve and into the pulmonary arteries. These arteries lead to the lungs. In the lungs, carbon dioxide is exchanged for oxygen and the blood returns to the left side of the heart by way of the pulmonary veins. It enters the left atrium and then passes through the bicuspid valve and into the largest and strongest chamber of the heart, the left ventricle. When the left ventricle contracts, the blood is push, pushed through the aortic valve and into the aorta, which is the largest blood vessel in the body. The blood travels throughout the body and this cycle repeats itself. I hope that helps with understanding. Welcome to Moo Math blood. and Science. In this video, I'd like to talk about the lungs. The lungs are part of the respiratory system. The respiratory system breathes in oxygen from the atmosphere and then transfers this oxygen into the bloodstream. And then it also helps the human body release carbon dioxide from the bloodstream into the atmosphere. You have two lungs, a left and a right lung, and they are located by, beside your heart. Your heart pumps blood to the lungs where oxygen is exchanged for carbon dioxide. Your right lung is larger than your left lung, and your lungs weigh around three pounds. Air travels down your trachea and into two tube, tubes called the bronchus. You have a left and a right bronchus. The bronchus then branch into bronchi, which branch into even smaller tubes called bronchioles. At the end of the bronchioles are tiny air sacs called alveoli. At the alveoli, oxygen is exchanged for carbon dioxide. The oxygen and carbon dioxide diffuse into and out of your blood. Because the lungs have millions of alveoli, they actually feel like a heavy sponge. Your lungs are also divided into sections called lobes. Your right lung has three lobes and your left lung has two lobes. Your autonomic nervous system controls the rate that your lungs inflate and deflate your lungs. The lungs inflate with the help of an expanding rib cage and a muscle called the diaphragm. When the diaphragm moves down, the lungs inflate. 
and when the diaphragm moves up, the lungs deflate. Let's take a look. You breathe around 10 to 20 times a minute. So there you are your lungs, the breathing, let's exchange oxygen oxygen for carbon dioxide. I feel like a sponge organ. Welcome to Minimum Math and Science. In this video I'd like to talk about the functions of the spleen. The spleen is an organ located in the upper far left of the abdomen to the left of the stomach. The spleen is about the size of your fist and has a purple color and is about four inches long. The spleen has several functions. First, it filters blood. It acts as a filter for blood as part of the immune system. Old red blood cells are recycled in the spleen, and platelets and white blood cells are stored there. Secondly, the spleen holds a reserve of blood in case of significant bleeding. Much like a blood-filled balloon, it acts as a reserve source for extra blood. The spleen also helps the immune system to recognize and attack foreign pathogens and other allergens. Interesting fact, while most people are somewhat healthier with a spleen, it is absolutely possible to have a normal life without a spleen. Secondly, when damaged or when you're fighting a series of infections like mono, the spleen can enlarge from the size of a softball to the size of a volleyball. It becomes very tender and can be dangerous. There we go, that's our spleen, a small organ that's still very in science. In this video, I'd like to talk about the pancreas. The pancreas is an organ located in the abdominal area. Let's take a look at its location and what it looks like. This is an organ about the size and shape of an average banana. It sits behind your stomach. The opening of the pancreas attaches to the first part of your small intestine. The pancreas has two important roles in the human body. First, it helps with digestion. After food enters the top of the small intestine, the pancreas secretes a clear watery substance that contains several enzymes. These enzymes help digest proteins, carbohydrates, and helps convert fat into fatty acids and cholesterol. Secondly, the pancreas helps maintain our blood sugar levels by secreting hormones. Blood glucose levels must be maintained within certain limits so that there's a constant supply of sugar to feed the cells but not too much so that the, the kidneys and other organs aren't damaged. The pancreas produces two hormones to help control the blood sugar. The first is glucagon. Glucagon raises glucose levels by stimulating the liver to metabolize glucagon into glucose molecules and then this glucose is released into the blood. The second hormone is insulin and this hormone lowers blood glucose levels after a meal by stimulating the absorption of glucose by the liver along with muscles and fat tissues. So the pancreas has two very important roles. Helps with digestion and also helps regulate our blood. Welcome to Moo Math and Science. In this video I'd like to talk about the liver. The liver is the largest internal organ we have. It is very important to all organisms that have a liver and we would quickly die without our liver. The liver has many functions. It aids in digestion, stores important nutrients, and is a manufacturing plant. The liver stores a green substance called bile. Bile is used in the large intestines to help break down fats. Bile is stored in the gallbladder, which is found right underneath the liver. The liver also helps to detoxify. For example, it detoxes alcohol and converts ammonia into a less toxic 
urea. During exercise, the liver breaks down glucose that it stores into glycogen that can be used as energy. It stores vitamin B12, iron, and copper. It produces blood clotting proteins and many hormones. It also helps the immune system. Here's some more functions of the liver. Your liver is a superstar organ and works hard to keep us alive. Welcome Thanks to Moon Math and Science. In this video, I'd like to talk about the small intestines. The small intestines is a major site of digestion for us. After being converted into a soupy material in the stomach called chyme, our food moves into the small intestines. The small intestines is long. In fact, it is roughly three times your height, or around 18 feet in length. It is divided into three sections. The top part is called the duodenum. It is roughly a foot in length. The middle section is called the jejunum, and it is seven feet in length. And the longest section is the ileum. The small intestines carries out two main functions. It digests and absorbs. In order to digest food in the intestines, the gallbladder releases bile into the small intestine. This bile helps to break down fat. In addition, the pancreas secretes a digestive enzyme into the intestines that helps to break down proteins. All this occurs in the top part of the intestines. The walls of the small intestines have finger-like projections called villi that help absorb nutrients. That, and then these nutrients pass directly into the bloodstream. Much of this absorption occurs in the second half of the intestines. From the small intestines, food passes to the large intestines where water is Welcome absorbed. Welcome to Moo Math and Science. In this video, I'd like to talk about the large intestines. After passing through the small intestines, food travels into the large intestines. Your large intestines is roughly 9 feet in length, but gets its name because it has a larger diameter than the small intestines. Your large intestine is also called the colon. The large intestine is divided into several sections. The beginning section is called the cecum. Food from the small intestine travels to the cecum. The cecum is a little like a pouch and receives food material called chyme from the small intestines at the ileum. From the cecum, food travels upward into the colon. Water and salt is absorbed in the colon. The next section is a curved section called the sigmoid. The food that once was chyme has now been converted into feces and it is stored in the sigmoid until it travels to the rectum and then exits the body. One of the main jobs of the large intestine is to absorb water. In addition, vitamin K is produced in the colon with the help of bacteria. Vitamin K helps you clot blood, it helps to build bones, and it aids in keeping your insulin levels correct. So there are the large intestines. Another stop along the digestive and science. In this video, I'd like to talk about the kidneys. The kidneys are two bean-shaped organs found on the left and right side of your vertebrae. The kidneys are important organs because they filter your blood. Your blood passes through the kidneys 20 to 25 times each hour. The renal artery delivers blood to the kidney and the renal vein moves blood away from the kidneys. You have two kidneys. As the blood passes through your kidneys, the kidneys remove waste material from the blood and it is also releasing or holding on to water and salt. Your kidneys also help control your blood pressure 
and can stimulate the bone marrow to make more red blood cells. Attached to each kidney are two tube-shaped tubes called ureters, and they carry the waste material from the kidney to the bladder. The waste that is filtered out by the kidney is called urine. This travels down the ureter and into your bladder. When the bladder fills up, it signals your brain that it is time to go to the restroom. These two bean-shaped organs found by your vertebrae are very important for keeping your blood and your body clean from waste. Thanks for watching and Moo Moo Math uploads a new math and science video every day. Please subscribe and share.